Hey guys, and welcome to the episode number 100 of Full Funnel B2B Marketing Podcast. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Um, as promised, today we are going to share lots of lessons that we have collected this year in 22 with my co-founder, Vlad. Uh, he will join us in a minute. And uh, while we are waiting for him, let me know, guys, where you all joining us from. Type in a Zoom chat where you all joining us from. Curious to see. And I would just give you a quick sense of uh, what we are going to discuss today. So, uh, as you know, it's the end of 2022 and all of you might be, I assume all of you are already in a planning mode, preparing campaigns and marketing plans for the next year. I know lots of you are thinking about new initiatives, demand generation, account-based marketing, right? Uh, new marketing programs. And uh, aside from traditional planning, aside from forecasts, budget planning, there are lots of things that I believe it makes sense to include and to consider. And basically, recently we did an analysis of all the projects that we have done this year with Vladimir and uh, write down eight most important uh, lessons that um, probably will help you to have an insightful and impactful marketing program for 2023. So we have folks today from Mexico, Munich, uh, Orlando, Richmond, Denmark, nice, uh, Hertfordshire, Houston, Montreal, Lithuania, London, Pakistan, cool. So again, happy to hear our happy to see our broad marketing international marketing community so while we are waiting for Vlad I believe uh, we can kick off the session we prepared the slides and I basically would be sharing uh, the key let's say insights and uh, my main takeaways right as well you guys are very welcome to jump in to ask any questions at the end of the session we'll also have time for Q&A we have collected some questions from our community, so I'm happy to cover everything. But that being said, let's dive in and uh, let's discuss the state of full funnel marketing, right? First of all, uh, my main observation and something that I would love to share with you is that the role of marketing is changing. Uh, there are still lots of, uh, there are still too many B2B companies, let's put it like this, that, uh, treat marketing in an obsolete way, right? They tend to think that uh, marketing is just all about making some things look nicer, right? So it's all about visuals. Some of them think that marketing is a pure lead generation function. Some of them are thinking that marketing is all about trade shows and events and conferences, right? But uh, you all know, we are all here, you all know that marketing is not sales and it's not a sales function, neither it's a sales order taker function, right? It's not lead gen, it's not art and crafts department. I believe that the role of marketing uh, can be broke down into seven main categories. First of all, all marketing should be revenue aligned, right? I know there are lots of conversations about print awareness, about print marketing, etc. And unfortunately, too many marketers are making print and demand gen campaigns as silent functions, right? Which is uh, absolutely wrong way about uh, thinking or treating marketing that way. Print awareness, demand generation, these are the parts, these are the parts of full funnel marketing, and they all should be tied to revenue activities. And basically uh, everything is intertwined in that model. I don't think that marketing uh, shouldn't be revenue aligned, right? Whenever you are launching any campaign, always sit down with sales. And this is something that uh, what I have posted about today on LinkedIn, right? That marketing function should work alongside sales and should help sales as well with generating sales opportunities with 
help them to decrease the sales cycle lengths, right? Help to increase the win rate, et cetera, and also impact and influence the sales pipeline velocity. Next one is obviously the go to market strategy. It all includes defining the priority channels, the understanding the buyer journey and share the buying process with uh, executives, with the sales team and align marketing and sales processes around it, right? It's also about improving the marketing message position and the value proposition. It's all about nailing down and creating a crystal clear ICP. So later you can have a proper alignment with sales and with executives on the campaigns that you're going to launch, why you're going to launch these campaigns, why do you need a specific budget, right? Making the right forecast, etc. Next one. And obviously it's a primary goal uh, driving awareness and generating demand. But as I said, right, it always should be tied with the bottom of the funnel activities, right? With helping sales to generate it, uh, to generate business opportunities. That's why I don't believe, let's say, in just a silent function like marketing is all about demand gen or awareness. Neither I believe that marketing should be all about the demand capture, right? It's a mix of all operations and that's why we call it full funnel marketing. So aside from driving awareness and demand, obviously your marketing team uh, should be in charge of capturing this demand. And quite often uh, in B2B marketing, we think that capturing the demand is all about running, let's say, uh, direct ads, right? Driving traffic to landing pages and capturing the conversion but it's not only about this by capturing the demand it's also about tracking the high intent channels and you can use intent data solutions like zoom in for clear bit alba cross whatever right to track the uh, visitors that are checking your high intent website pages like price and case studies use cases etc right next one is uh Tracking, for example, the product demo signups, product webinar signups, some of the, let's say, uh, product related events, right? And tracking all the engagement that is happening uh, in between your communication with target accounts. Next one is removing friction points from the funnel, right? So it's all about improving all the points like uh, making a clear price and product explanation. Um, it's all about buyer enablement as well. We are all buyers, right? Even if we are B2B marketers, we still purchase lots of solutions, right? And even in tech, we purchase our B2B marketing stack. So, uh, and uh, when it comes to purchasing B2B marketing stack, right? Uh, we all have this buyer experience and uh, quite often, I basically that has happened to me multiple times. Quite often I got a recommendation about a specific product. I visit the website, I start uh, checking the product and I have, I simply can't understand what this product does. There is lots of slang, there is no product video. And to understand what this product does, I need to go through a clumsy, complicated qualification process talking to BDM or SDR, First of all, booking the demo, right? Then uh, getting through the qualification process of BDMs or SDRs, and obviously it's just frustrating. So these things. Next one, it leads us to alignment, right? So we need to have a common alignment with our leadership and sales team about uh, what basically it's a summary of what I have already said, right? Uh, we need to have a clear alignment. What does lead mean, right? So we need to have a clear definition of lead because if you don't have it and if you like if it's not approved by everybody, then you'll always be having an MQL SQL debate, right? Or MQL SQL problem. If you don't have a clear lead handoff process, you'll always be blamed by sales team for generating low quality leads and potentially getting these questions from executives, right? So that's, that should be a clear process. Next, whenever you launch a campaign, quite often lots of campaigns are being killed by impatience or wrong expectations, right? So sometimes you have this discussion and 
will cover this today when we'll touch the ch uh, change management, right? Quite often you come up with the campaign and you start talking to, let's say sales about what are your biggest bottlenecks. So they describe you the bottlenecks and one of the bottlenecks, let's say, is that your brand is uh, not well known on your market, right? So that's why you are losing the opportunities to your competitors, to your competition. So you come up with one brand awareness campaign, right? And then you sometimes like, especially if your executives don't have marketing background, they might be thinking about this campaign again in a linear way. So let's do, I don't know, let's have 10,000 impressions of our dimension ads and these 10,000 impressions should generate inbound opportunity. Unfortunately, <laughs> buyer buying process is not linear and it won't happen, right? Also, sometimes they might think, okay, so if we do print awareness, then we need to expect the results in one month, right? Or in the next 60 days. So the impatience and wrong, wrong expectations quite often kill all the campaigns beforehand. So this is really important. And aside, of, uh, aside from this, obviously you need to have the same message with sales, right? You need to do an appropriate account research. You need to understand how exactly you are going to market to different buying committee members, especially if you are selling to mid-size or enterprise account. And you need to have a clear process. How are you going to warm up specific accounts and uh, basically how sales is going to activate these accounts. And two last parts that summarize everything. It's all about orchestrating campaigns and um, doing the analysis, right? If you are not measuring your performance, if you are not tracking the progress, right? If you are not improving your campaigns, then it would be hard to scale your marketing function and increase marketing source revenue. So that being said, uh, quite often we get a question. So what is the uh, skill set a modern B2B marketer should have? I believe you guys all have heard about the T-shaped marketer conception. Type uh, plus in a Zoom chat if you have heard about T-shaped marketer or minus if you have never heard. So the T-shaped marketer came from, obviously from B2C, which means that you need to have a, like core expertise and then create a vertical expertise in different areas, right? And when it comes to B2C or SMB skill set, quite often it's all about content marketing, email marketing, data and analytics, paid media, search marketing, social media, etc right uh, quite often it's all about the copyright and the analytics running ads etc when it comes to uh, b2b marketing skill set we have uh, had these discussions with flat uh, and basically we believe that uh, the modern b2b marketer is a full funnel marketer right the person who thinks in terms of all stages of uh, buyer journey from awareness to expansion, right? That's why we break down the skill set into six main stages, the awareness. And here we need to have the skills like um, content creation and basic organic search. It's also about running the podcast activities or doing any, let's say, content activities and events. It's all about creating effective case studies and knowing how to run paid distribution, right? Understanding how to run uh, webinars and newsletters, understand the modern demand capturing process, know how to run activation programs together with sales to generate opportunities with target accounts. And if you don't have a dedicated client success function, then we believe then uh, it's, uh, it should belong to marketing team doing the customer interviews, success stories, case studies, and based on this, prepare deal expansion opportunities and uh, prepare upsell campaigns together with sales to drive the pipeline. So Vlad came back and basically I'm giving him mic and he will share the lesson number two. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> my apologies, I, my, my voice is a little bit shot. I seem to have caught a, a little cold. Uh, we have a question from Bridget. Are you saying an SMB marketer would follow the T-shaped model uh, and enterprise the funnel or that all markets should be funnel now? 
<clears throat> yeah, this is this is specifically important. This is important uh, specifically for marketers who are selling uh, either to enterprise or upper, let's say, upper up up mid market, right? Uh, these skills are important, but I would say that a lot of the skills that were on that uh, right hand side are going to be increasingly popular, but because even with the SMBs. Uh, the buyer journey is changing. <clears throat> and this is what this slide is all about, right? I'm sure if you have been following us for a while, you've seen our diagrams that we share on LinkedIn. And one of the most popular ones is, actually we set one uh, once, sat down and mapped out a complete buyer journey of one of our customers. And what's interesting about it is that what you see is you see, all of on the right hand side how to be to be buyers buyer right? you see all of these different steps and channels that they so this is not to say that uh all buyers are using these channels or that each buyer journey looks like that that's just an example by the way this is our example and by the way we were only aware of some of the steps, they took other steps that we are that we were not aware. So, in other words, what I'm trying to say, buyer journey is complex. It involves multiple people. It involves multiple channels. It takes a lot of time, etc. Maybe if you can just go one slide back, Andre, please. Uh, but on the left hand, what you see is how most B two B companies market today. And that's the B2B market in reality today. Unfortunately, if you see like on the top, you see, you know, a lot of companies, what they try is try to send cold audience to book a demo on a landing page. And the landing page doesn't really have a lot of product information, doesn't have all the information that you as a buyer need to make your decision. And by the way, uh, it's promoted to a cold audience. And the majority of that cold audience is not aware. There is no demand. They're not really buying a product like yours. The fact that I'm a marketer doesn't mean that I'm buying MarTech at this stage, right? And even, even if I have an issue, doesn't mean that I need to solve it today. Like usually that's our job. We deal with stuff, right? That's our job to deal with the issues that we have. Well, anyhow, all right. The next uh, or a div or another way that B2B companies market is, well, they, they, they say, okay, maybe we are not going to send cold audience, maybe we're going to educate them. And by educating, I mean, maybe they set up a webinar or an ebook or a white paper. And then again, they promote this, whether it's paid or otherwise, they generate leads and send those leads to sales. You have the same problem, you're not generating these people are the fact that they attended a webinar or downloaded the white paper obviously is not a buying signal and we yeah by the way sarang yes we will we will share uh slides uh we can share slides no problem and recording will be available on youtube and <clears throat> spotify apple all the podcast stuff um so the fact that somebody attended a webinar, you attending this podcast is just because you're interested to learn. It doesn't mean that you are they're interested to buy our services. Like we, I can if I assume that everybody who is attending this podcast is well, prove me wrong. Let me let me know, please, in the chat. Everybody who wants to buy from us, or or not, maybe better asked. Let me know with the plus if you don't if you didn't have intention to buy from us, but you joined this event just to learn from us. Uh, please, please do that. I'm really curious <laughs> because I would I, my assumption would be that the majority, the vast majority, if not everybody, joined just for the educational value. And <laughs> yes, yes, okay, exactly, exactly. So let's uh let's be let's be uh let's 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 be in line with that and that's uh, that's the whole point right so if i am <clears throat> if i am going to uh treat you as a lead and send you to sales or do a sales follow up on you 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 will be annoyed right so big why because that's not aligned with your buyer journey and at this stage you're only interested in education so maybe we can move on 
And so what you need to do, <clears throat> because you saw the, the complex by journey, now let's map that journey to the actual uh, full funnel, to the actual process of, you know, becoming aware of, you know, the problem or an opportunity, having a specific maybe trigger in your organization, uh, to learning about potential solutions to your problem, discovering different kinds of solution categories, deciding to say, maybe saying, okay, we want to implement A, B. And so my problem was that I need to generate and more enterprise sales uh, ready opportunities. And I was, you know, looking at different things and I decided that maybe ABM is a good fit for us. But then you will going, you're going to go and start thinking, do I want to buy ABM software? Do I want to hire an ABM marketer? Do I want to work with a consulting or a training company and et cetera? So it's going to be a long process going through all of these stages, right? Um, and Manoj, I had a plus one, so... Long target process that doesn't know there is a problem within the organization and we have a product to solve it. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so look, I, I think that uh, this is a good question, right? And so we are talking basically uh, about the first phase here. We're talking about awareness. Now, yeah. <laughs> So there is a nuance in what what in your question because you're saying prospect who doesn't know that there is a problem within the organization, right? They need to be aware of a specific issue. Maybe there is a broader issue. For example, if everything is going fine in the organization or they don't perceive that there is any problem, it's you, it's going to be difficult for you to uh, convince them that they have a problem. But for example, I don't know what you're selling, but let's let's go back to ABM. Um, if I if I go and I, I want to convince somebody that they uh, need ABM, right? So what is the problem that ABM solves? How to land, for example, enterprise leads? Well, if they're, I can maybe help them. They need to be aware that they have somewhere a problem in their pipeline. They maybe missed the targets. There has to be some bigger problem that they're trying to solve or, or a goal. Okay, we need to grow this much next year. So what are the ways in which we can grow, right? There has to be a, a bigger goal or a bigger problem. And now I can maybe point to a problem they didn't know they have. Maybe I can teach them that they need to analyze their uh crm and figure out that actually the majority of their revenue came from you know a few big clients and all of their marketing is focused on the small clients okay now i can like start creating awareness of the specific problem that is part of the bigger problem but if there is no urgency if there is not that trigger like we miss the targets or we have this ambitious goal for next year etc cetera, etc cetera, it's going to be uh, uh very very difficult <laughs> so um okay so as you can see on the right hand side you have all these different steps in the buyer journey and if all you're doing is just, for example, focusing on the demand capture. First of all, you're missing, you're not part of that buyer journey. What, and that, what does that mean? That means that usually you're going to position yourself as a commodity. Oh, you're just one of the many that is marketing their product at a later stage. For bigger deals, you're also very likely not going to win that deal because you're going to be too late to the party. I mean, for bigger deals with multiple buyers, with complex sales, usually your competitors who were there from the top or the beginning or somewhere, let's say, along the buy journey, longer with your, with your target accounts, they will have had the opportunity to uh, build a relationship with the buying committee, to position themselves as a good fit solution, to influence the purchase criteria, right? And you're coming there as one of the many vendors with a disadvantage that you just came as one of the many, right? So it's really difficult to win, especially larger deals uh, at that stage. Uh, so that's why you need to look at the full funnel. 
maybe Andre, uh, if you have a next slide or yes. Yeah. So this <clears throat> all leads us guys to the point of change management. Even if you, let's say, support the idea, you buy in everything, right? You buy the full funnel methodology and, or even if it doesn't matter, right? Maybe you are already like partially running it and you want to introduce new initiative or you want to change something. Maybe you joined a new organization, a new department, and you know that the things that, uh, the way they are currently working, I mean, marketing and sales processes, it won't help you to grow the business and it won't help you to hit your targets, right? Uh, lots of you, um, were working at one point, I believe, or maybe working currently for companies that cultivate, let's say, legion function, or we call it legion led organization or company centric, right? Mm -hmm. uh, these companies are easily to recognize. They don't have a clear ICP and they have pro targeting, right? Especially it's uh, the biggest problem we see in IT space, or more precisely in software development. There are like thousands, dozens of thousands software offshore development vendors. And what they are doing, they say, uh, they basically spam everybody on LinkedIn or by email saying, hey, do you need mobile app or web development or whatever, right? Let's have a talk. And just because you have a title CEO, VP of something, right? They are just spamming. Uh, spamming you and they play the game of numbers because the number one goal, I mean, we don't have a, spe a specialization, just tell us what we need. And the assumption is that, I mean, we just need to make aware everybody on our target market, which is something like startups in entire world, right? <laughs> Targeting millions of companies. And that's it. By the way, guys, uh, have you ever received this cold spam from software development vendors? I'm just curious to hear that. Plus, if you have ever received this, I'm basically just because I have a title co-founder, I'm getting more than 20 of these spammy messages every single week, despite that we have no technical product. <laughs> we are always being spammed. I don't know about what, but I get all every week I get more than 20 of these emails and messages. Curious to hear if you have the same experience. I, I can't see the chat, but Vlad. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All the time. Plus, uh, I think you should have asked how many of those do you receive per week? Because everybody yeah. for sure does that. So That's what that. else here, right? Uh, these organizations typically have lots of friction points. And by lots, I mean really lots, right? Gated demo. So, I mean, we have seen some companies that are afraid even to show what the product does. They put like slang that nobody, if you do, if you are not in that space and you don't have a very technical knowledge, you will never understand what the product does. And you can't see the features, right? You can't see how the product operates. And then if you want to see it, to, at least to understand, then you need to go through the qualification process, right? And it, probably you guys have seen this uh, fancy movie, right? When a person comes to, uh, to a store to purchase a t-shirt and then this person was qualified. Hey, can I take this t-shirt? No, you just need to book an appointment with our store manager. So this is ridiculous, but this is what is happening in the modern world, right? Uh, and then you, even despite the fact that uh, you might be they even they never look at 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 your like position and how you can use the product quite often these companies what they are doing they're just looking at your team size and in most cases they have access to clear beta zoom info they say ah your small company disqualified so this happened to me once and it's really a funny story so i was looking for an abm platform for one of our clients and I was in charge of the research. I was booking the demo calls with the uh, with different ABM vendors. And basically, <laughs> I was disqualified by one company. They told we are too small, but I told I'm not purchasing it for full funnel. I'm per I want to purchase it for our client. And this is uh, 
<laughs> to two thousand employees company, so quite big with a big marketing team and a big sales team. And the SDR he even didn't allow me to see the demo. But what's what is the most ridiculous part that a year later this company reached me out when we were hosting our second uh, annual full funnel summit. They reached me out and told, "Can we sponsor your summit?" And I'm saying, "So I'm not too small right now for you." <laughs> so it was a really ridiculous situation. But anyhow, uh, they are afraid to show price, right? Because competition can see it. But it's not a big problem. I mean, sometimes I know that companies are afraid to do it. But when I was doing research, whenever I want to get the price, I can easily do it. Even if these companies know me, I can ask I don't know anybody, my friend, my peers to do quick research, book the demo on behalf right, of their company, and then they provide me this information. There is no problem to get the price. And so sometimes it's really ridiculous. And of course, no detailed use cases. So this fear of my competitors will, you might know how, right? And steal something from me. This is this obsolete mindset that creates the friction. And quite often, even the most creative marketing campaigns are killed beforehand just because of these factors. But in most cases, marketing won't be allowed to do any creative, no print awareness, no demand generation, forgot about the stages. Marketing will be strapped for direct response ads, gated content, product pitch webinars, and sales will be in charge of cold sequence outbound. In these organizations, marketing is measured by leads, MQLs, cost of acquisition. So the main target is to generate more leads for a lower cost, right? And then obviously CPL cost per lead should be declined. All the campaigns are measured in a, they uh, have a short time frame. And whenever somebody wants to launch a new initiative, it's usually one-off campaign. Even in our case, uh, we know the companies, that's why in our process, we have one preliminary stage before committing to long-term engagement when um, basically companies tell us that uh, we discovered that uh, their mindset account-based marketing, it's all about you know creating one-time campaign, not making it a process, but just one-time campaign, which is like a fancy, uh, maybe fancy replacement for <laughs> sequence called outbound, right? So we'll do the direct mail or whatever, and boom, we'll have a full pipeline. This is this all obsolete mindset. So why I am sharing this with you? That because if you guys decide to launch anything new year or change anything in your organization, right? You will be dealing with change management and make sure that everybody in your organization has the right, uh, the right expectations and the correct mindset, right? So if you are going... Um, you probably have seen on the right side, right? Uh, what does it mean to be a full funnel marketing or buyer-centric B2B company? The main K KPI is the marketing source pipeline and marketing source revenue. And every marketing campaign, de depending on what stage it belongs to, awareness or demand gen, right? Or activation or capture, every marketing campaign has its own set of metrics because you can't measure brand awareness campaign the same way as you are measuring activation campaign. Makes no sense. But in most case, in most cases, as I said, lots of organizations try to measure everything by lead and they try to justify everything, every single touch point, right? Something that Flat recently posted about to understand and appreciate the touch points without conversion, right? There are so many things that are happening outside of our attribution and outside of our horizon, right? And we need just to accept and understand it. And whenever we do full funnel marketing, it's a long-term strategy. It's not an immediate one-off initiative that will just overnight provide a success. So that being said, what is really important and some practical takeaways, right? Gradually introduce new initiatives. Don't come with like big, massive campaigns. And we see this quite often in account-based marketing. A new CMO or a new marketer joins the company and to prove Owen 
let's say, capability, this person says, hey, I need to purchase ABM software, then we have this. And in most cases, they just present this obsolete, let's say, playbooks that you can find in ebooks of demand base or terminals, right? So upload a list of accounts to our platform, target them with display ads, and then reach out to everybody with uh, called outbound, right? Um, it's just a very, I would call it, we can call it ABM, but it's very oversimplified account-based marketing, which rarely produces the results, right? So don't do, do, don't do this. Whenever you come, right, uh, make sure that uh, you do an appropriate analysis and allocate 80% of your resources, budget, team resources, time to the campaigns that already drive revenue. While given 20% for experimentation. But when you experiment, right? And when you launch a new initiative, make sure that you have a small lean team. Don't involve everybody from your company. Don't do it on a big scope, right? Don't purchase expensive stack. Make sure that you build the process first, right? And present the in-house results and later you can scale it. Um, that being said, uh, we have three stages how we think with Vlad about building any new operation, any new marketing operation. You start with the pilot function. And even if you are an experienced B2B marketer, even if you have done multiple times ABM campaigns or dimension campaigns, you still join a new company, right? With a new culture, they might be a different growth stage. They might have different skill set than you had, uh, you were dealing with previously, right? Uh, so still your first campaign, despite of your experience, it would be pilot campaign. You will be building the hypothesis, right? And, uh, you can't make a real forecast. You can make an assumption, but not a forecast. Forecast on zero always equals zero, right? So you need, your pilot campaign would be your first benchmark once you see a good traction once you see good positive let's say outcomes of this campaign you can start operationalizing it and uh, more or less involving new team members so it becomes a company spread process right and then you can uh, scale the same processes to other departments to other verticals or to other regions depending of uh, if you are working for let's say for a bigger organization and uh, to wrap it up, uh, set up the right expectations and timeline, right? Again, I have mentioned this a couple of times, but even this year, we have um, basically, uh, we were dealing with this mistake, which is, was not obvious and in one project, despite all the facts that we were describing, right? Uh, executives didn't attend all the strategic calls and then there were like, wrong expectations that if we'll do something, then in two weeks, they will have a full pipeline of opportunities and leads. And then this project didn't fly the way we expected, right? So always make sure that uh, you set up right expectations. Lead gen, and here is the difference, right? Why you might be dealing with the problems because lead gen is really easy to launch. Right, you can set up called outbound sequence and build list and zoom in for really in one hour. There is no problem with it, and potentially in a short term time frame, it will gen it might generate some results. Right, so this gen uh, these results might come faster, but in the long term, you will be sitting with an empty pipeline and without growing your business. With demand generation, the process is completely opposite. Don't expect that if you'll post something on LinkedIn or you will start a newsletter tomorrow, right? Or you'll start a podcast or whatever, you'll host a webinar. Don't expect that you will have a full pipeline of opportunities. But with a matter of time, with a matter of growing your brand, right? With a matter of doing these activities consistently, you can expect it. And then demand generation starts outperforming lead generation. In this case, of course, I'm thinking about siloed functions, right? But this is what we said. I, in an ideal world, you need to blend the models. You don't need to think in lead gener about lead generation in terms of this obsolete called outbound, but lead generation should be 
exactly the way of activating engaged accounts together with sales, having this centralized playbook, right? Having a clear leads handoff process and having a process to generate opportunities with these accounts. So let's move to the, uh, I see lots of, uh, lots of uh, questions, but unfortunately I can't see the chat right now while sharing the screen. Oh, there were some questions it. about the axis that's clear. Um, but uh, let's talk about the next topic, right? <clears throat> what, we'll what catch it? up with everything uh, during the Q&A part. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the next point is what we see very often in organizations is that, <clears throat> excuse me, companies have a lot... I, I don't think this will work, Andre. <laughs> I just had one podcast and I had another uh, uh, one uh, live course that I did, and it seems like my voice is giving up on me. So maybe, yeah, my apologies. Uh, I'll 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 be here and answering questions, but maybe if you can just explain this because, um, I, yeah, my no voice... problem. So yeah. <laughs> I will I will substitute your voice. So until the end of the session, guys, you will be enjoying my voice. <laughs> so uh, let me cover the rest, right? And I will uh, try to cover it really quickly so we'll have time to cover all of your questions. First of all, the prioritization. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have seen while doing the audits and road mappings this year is uh, basically looking at the marketing team's capacity and seeing that everybody has a full plate, right? So you don't have a space to introduce new initiatives, which means that basically if you want to launch something new or you want to refine the process, it means that something should be took out from a person who will be involved in the campaign, right? Otherwise, it will just create a burden for that, for that specific uh, person. So what has happened in some of the organizations we have seen, right? The, uh, we have been in touch this year. And also you have seen the consequences of this on the bigger scale. Have you guys seen all the uh, layoffs happening in the big organizations recently? Stripe, Meta, have you seen this? How many people did they fire? Type plus if you have seen. Um, what we have seen uh, is that some companies, right, because they raised money or got additional investment or budget, right, they started to extremely fast to hire marketers. And these marketers were hired for non-existent processes, right? That was a huge problem, which means they hired people to create these processes from scratch. But quite often, there is a learning curve for these people Right, and then these people are in charge. Imagine they're in charge of building something based on their prior experience, and now they also intertwined with new team members. And somebody becomes in charge of onboarding these people, sharing the playbooks. It creates a huge, huge, huge mess. So uh, this was the exact reason why some marketing teams that grew extremely fast this year, right? They needed six months or eight months later to lay off their, their people. Another problem is that some of the folks, right? Uh, let's say the problem with the full plate, some of the folks had too much on their plate and then let's say CMO or VP of marketing or like somebody from senior leadership starts to add in more tasks or saying, hey, I want you guys to launch this initiative, but well, I'm not going to take something out of you, right? It's just a new campaign. And then it becomes a problem. This person becomes in, uh, basically this person or people start dealing with a problem. One, learning curve, right? Because this is something new. This is a pilot campaign and they are learning while doing, right? And the second problem, they might be, especially if it's like, uh, account-based marketing or whatever, right? They might be dealing with the sales. So building all of these playbooks, et cetera, becomes another problem. And the third problem, they need to maintain the existing campaigns and make sure that they are delivering the same results, which means that 
these people is just a matter of time when everybody starts questioning their performance and saying that these people underperform. So whenever you want to launch anything, make sure, and whenever you are planning next year, next quarter, whatever, make sure that you prioritize everything. Align with everybody on the goals. Align with everybody on the most, let's say, painful challenges your marketing and sales teams or your organization currently faces, right? And then map out the most important campaigns. M make sure that everybody agrees on these campaigns. Make sure to score and prioritize what you are going to launch and when, and then launch it gradually, right? And the most important part, even if you have budget, even if you have money, don't launch all the, these activities at the same time and just hire people and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to launch demand generation. That's your task now. You are demand gen marketer. That's your task to do demand generation. But what does really demand generation mean? For lots of organizations, uh, everybody, even in this room, everybody can understand demand generation differently, right? And if I would tell you guys, uh, hey, join full funnel and do demand generation fast, then you might have one assumption of what we expect, right? Somebody else will have another set of expectations and me and Plot will have completely different understanding and expectations. So this is really important. Um, and that being said, quite often we see that uh, uh, companies uh, basically are falling in love or are obsessed with launching multiple campaigns, multiple tactics, right? Because if you'll open a LinkedIn, probably if you guys open LinkedIn right now, you'll see that TikTok is hot, Snapchat is hot, Reddit is hot, Quora is hot, everything is hot, right? So let's do let's do TikTok. Let's do TikTok advertisement because you can cover it like new and tap channel, etc. And you see all the screenshots people are sharing, you know, like hey, so we saw an opportunity coming from TikTok, et cetera. But the point that somebody says to you that TikTok is hot doesn't mean that you need to go there, right? And you don't need to grow your company with uh, by like running 50 campaigns in parallel if you don't have a big team that knows how to maintain these campaigns, right? If you are a relatively small team or if you are building team, excel at few programs at few channels just believe me guys if you are selling to mid-size enterprise organizations your buyers are not hanging out all the day long in watching tiktok videos and then hanging out in linkedin twitter facebook etc they're not doing this yeah if you don't believe me just run customer interviews and <laughs> they will just tell you the same right so that being said Quite often, you can scale your company by maintaining, but uh, on a high level, on high professional level, several campaigns on several channels. For us, you can see the uh, why we are mentioning with Flood 2021, because this was the first year of full final .io. It was just it's it's it was just two of us, right? And we did only, I mean, regularly, right? We did only four regular operations, weekly podcast, daily thought leadership on LinkedIn, monthly webinars, and weekly email newsletter. So the results, 63, uh, 63 inbound opportunity, 600K pipeline, right? So not saying it, uh, these numbers mean nothing, right? For somebody, it could be like a tiny revenue. For somebody, it could be like a huge revenue. So I'm not saying about the numbers, I'm just proven the fact that you don't need too many tactics. And the same we are seeing with clients. With some clients that we are working for a long time, three, four standard operations help these clients drive in 10 million pipeline every year. So that's that's the point, right? Don't uh, be obsessed with running multiple campaigns. And uh, one more important point, something that I have already mentioned, right lots of interactions with buyers are hidden you won't see yeah somebody some of you joined the webinar today not the webinar this is our episode number 100 of full funnel podcast right some of you might recommend our podcast to friends colleagues peers or maybe share the podcast inside the organization so we can't track it right and then somebody 
from your organization will go to our website, right? And maybe start following us on LinkedIn. Well, I can see obviously that somebody started to follow me on LinkedIn, but again, there is no interaction. Maybe the content that uh, I and Vlad are sharing on LinkedIn, uh, people from your organization will be consumed passively, right? Without ever engaging. But this doesn't mean that nothing happens, right? There are still conversations and maybe whenever you'll have a need, right? You need somebody, you need a partner who can train and coach and help to launch uh, ABM, right? We might be a number one choice for your organization. And the same uh, is equal to any other category, right? Doesn't really matter. Sales, the process would be the same, right? And you might have already a list of people in your mind. If you'll have this problem, you'll go to these people. So this is really important to understand. And this leads me to the next point, right? In our full funnel marketing, you run lots of campaigns that can't be directly attributed to revenue. But it doesn't mean that you can't measure it. You still can measure it, but you need to have a blended model, right? First of all, what blended model stands for? You have heard about this one. How did you hear about us web form? But don't just blindly follow this only one advice. So if you have only this one, right? And you rely only on, on this self attribution. What you will do guys, if you have this form and somebody says online. So what are your takeaways? Share with me in the Zoom chat. So. If you want to make, a, let's say, you want to make a data-driven decision, right? You analyze your self-attribution web form and most uh, replies are internet or online. So what kind of decisions you can make? You can make, sorry. Let me know in the Zoom chat. I will check your replies later. So the point is obviously that it's really hard to make any decision based on it, right? That's why you need to have also, you need to look at digital attribution at all traces, at all digital traces that you can identify. This somebody from your organization sign up for this webinar, for example. Somebody has joined our trenches community. Somebody follows or engages with you on LinkedIn, right? Somebody has uh, visited our website and checked the case studies. Somebody consumed our content in ABM Content Hub. These are all digital traces that give you a clue what's going on, right? Uh, what kind of, let's say, activities impacted, I'm not saying that uh, attributed, but impacted the buyer process. And finally, you can enrich all of these insights with customer interviews. We always say that customer interviews is the uh, process that gives you most of insights, right? This is where you can extract the knowledge, you can ask about the triggers, what was happening in the business. Uh, so they decided to start looking for solutions like yours, right? Uh, where did they look for information? Uh, did they advise with anybody, right? What channels did they use for the research? And you can collect lots of insights, especially if you install this process in your operations, right? And you do it right immediately after signing the deal. Next, you need to have to make sure that marketing performs well, right? Because if you want to change the mindset, uh, you need to show the marketing source revenue. So obviously, if you post something on LinkedIn, right, you won't get, uh, I mean, as a consequence, as a consequence, you'll be getting inbound opportunities at some point, right? But it won't be happening that you post something on LinkedIn and people will go to your website and start booking the demo calls like crazy, right? Obviously, it never happens. So but it doesn't mean that this can, like thought leadership should be measured by leads, right? It's an obsolete way. And again, this belongs to lead gen led organizations. So for every campaign, you need to set up different indicators, right? Leading indicators that show that something happens, right? That's really important. So this is uh, what you can see on the right side in the campaign reporting. This is a simple, by the way, report that we usually create for a LinkedIn SAT leadership. And finally, the revenue report. Uh, for me, what I would love and how I love to measure marketing performance, I want to see at uh, on marketing source pipeline, I want to see I want to look at marketing source revenue and I want to see 
I want to look at sales pipeline velocity, velocity, sorry, dynamics. I want to see the positive changes. I want to see that everything that I have done this month or this quarter positively impacted bottom, uh, the bottom line, right? That's the most important thing, right? And it doesn't matter because it's it's obsolete way to say, hey, so let's measure the thought leadership against, I don't know, webinars. It's not it's not one versus another. This is the marketing mix, right? And that's why we have full funnel model. So to prove that your marketing works, always show the marketing source pipeline, marketing source revenue, and the positive changes in the sales pipeline velocity. Uh, I will accelerate a little bit just to make sure that we'll have time for the Q&A, right? First of all, um, this is the slide and you guys can later check the slides to go through the um, science of marketing and sales misalignment. So thanks to Vlad for creating this slide. I highly recommend you guys to always watch for misalignment science and regularly remove them, right? You, on this slide, you can see lots of them like lack of awareness and target accounts, uh, sales reject marketing leads, marketing becomes an order taker from sales, bad company positioning, dependence on cold outreach, long sales cycle, right? These are all the signs, like traditional signs or red flags, if you will, uh, of marketing and sales misalignment. So you can use it as a checklist, right? And go uh, uh, like basically uh, audit your organization and see, okay, this is our problem, right? And on the left side, you usually uh, can see the reasons, right? Why, like, why this is happening. For example, lack of customer research is exactly the problem that uh, companies don't know how to market, right? What channels to use, what to say, how their customers are buying, right? This could be the reason for low win rates, etc. Back and prod ICP, the same problem, right? Sales rejects marketing leads. So just because there is no clear alignment on ICP, obviously that could be a huge problem. So I highly recommend you to use it as a checklist and regularly review or audit your organization and say, okay, this is the red flag we have. These are the reasons probably that uh, might be creating this challenge, right? And just make sure that you have an open conversation with sales and with senior leadership and making sure that you are removing this red flags. Next one, something that I have already mentioned and you, as you can see, uh, uh, as you probably saw on previous slides, that full funnel model is a cohesive model. That's why we don't believe in siloed functions. In lots of communities and as well on LinkedIn, quite often I see a conversation ABM versus demand generation because these are two, let's say, modern marketing, B2B marketing tactics everybody is talking about. That's not about one against another. When Whenever you have conversation one against or one versus another, another, you are creating silent functions. These are integrated functions, right? In this case, demand generation supports account-based marketing with engaged accounts, right? Companies that demonstrated uh, interest, potential interest in your product, right? These companies, um, uh, whatever, engaged with your content, something that I mentioned, right? Visited high intent website pages, et cetera, et cetera. And then this, uh, the best part is that these companies are already aware of your brand and of your product. So now ABM team, marketing and sales can take this account for further warm up and activation, right? That's the point. So whenever you launch something, don't think like about any new program as a silent function. Think how to connect the new program, the new initiative to existing processes, right? Or if you already, you can review everything that you are currently doing and just look at these silent functions. Okay, this is the completely silent operation. So for example, we know uh, once we were, we were auditing one of the clients, they were doing the podcast and the webinars and this for this podcast, they have never invited the like let's say the guests from their target accounts, 
which is the lowest hanging fruit, right? When they did the webinars, they have never tried to nurture the, let's say, the signups. They have never tried to reach out and uh, get the feedback why people sign up for that specific webinar. Was it helpful or not, right? So this is a perfect example. And my recommendation for you guys, don't think in terms of siloed functions. Always think uh, in terms of blended or cohesive models. And finally, uh, the uh, last slide, I said that Vlad will explain to you, but I would just, uh, this is the slide that he recently created. So I will quickly explain uh, to you the five mental models that you can leverage uh, to become a better B2B marketer, right? If you want to grow the organization, it's not only about, let's say, learning about account-based marketing or dimension or about whatever, right? Uh, there are five principles that we believe you need to have to become a successful marketing leader. The first one is the 80-20 principle. And uh, if you have never um, read the book called 80-20 by Richard Koch, I highly recommend you to read it. It's just a fantastic book that will change the way how you are thinking about the marketing, right? We always say that you don't need uh, more leads right? You need less but more qualified accounts with a high probability to purchase your product, right? Um, this week, I shared one of the case studies uh, we have done uh, with our client where we had only 13 accounts, right, in our campaign, but we generated seven opportunities. So 50 percent conversion rate less tech and tactics more strategy make sure that we always spend more time on preparation planning analysis and then the execution execution can be done relatively fast whenever people look at our case studies they believe that uh, some of them think that uh, the key to success is creative direct mail outreach but they neglect all the fundamental work that we are doing before that creative outreach so they look only on the, let's say, this final piece of the cake, but they don't look at the preparation process and the recipe, right? So that's the first one. The next one is the growth mindset, right? Uh, we believe that you need to grow consistently. And uh, also what is important, something that I have already mentioned, you need to excel at specific programs, right? Dominate, it's better to dominate, let's say if your target audience is on LinkedIn, it's better to dominate thought leadership on your specific market on LinkedIn without doing anything else, right? I mean, of course, I'm just generalizing, but obviously it would be better if you'll do some more activities, right? But at least make sure that if you are doing this, you are one of the best, let's say, companies who are running this specific activity uh, long-term thinking you have heard about this a lot right next understand the compound results one of the best books i have read recently is the psychology of money by morgan hustle and in this book he shared one fantastic fact about uh, warren buffett so he said that his uh, net worth uh, or let's say 75 percent of his net worth was generated in the last 10 years. And why? Because of the compound interest. This is uh, this is actually the same that we are seeing with all marketing activities, right? You don't see the overnight success. You don't produce the immediate results. But the more time you invest, the more time you commit to a specific channel and program, the more ROI and outcomes you are getting out from it. And uh, finally, right, the high leverage. Uh, make sure that everything that you are doing uh, is an evergreen, right? Something that you can always repurpose. Like uh, in our case, we always, and if we publish something on LinkedIn, right? We want somebody to take this advice a year later and implement it, right? So it won't be obsolete. Uh, make sure that uh, all activities that you are doing, they are boosting your brand. And even if it's bottom of the funnel or even activation activities, right? Everything can boost your brand. Make sure that you document your processes and create playbooks. So everybody in your organization can open the playbook, watch the onboarding video, understand the steps and replicate the same campaign campaign relatively fast. These are the most important um, 
mental models that I highly recommend you to leverage. So that being said, we have some time for q and I have collected the questions from our community, but I would love to start with the questions from our chat. Um, and we have a lot. So first of all, guys, let me ask you a question. Was it insightful? Was it valuable? Share with me your emoji in a emoji plus or whatever, uh, five score, whatever you prefer in a Zoom chat. How, how was it for you? Was it insightful? Did you learn something new? Share with me. Or type the emoji or whatever you prefer. Just want to see your feedback. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the feedback. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, okay, cool. So let's cover the questions. I see that Vlad, yeah, Vlad covered a lot. Vlad, let me know, please, if I need to pick up any questions from the chat. No, okay, good. So uh, guys, if you want, you can uh, switch on your camera if you want to ask your question live, right? So feel free to tune, uh, tune in and I will unmute you so uh, you can ask live. And meanwhile, let me check the questions that are coming from our community. Or feel free to type your questions in a Zoom chat if we didn't cover something, right? There was a question from Hanisha. So B2B market, a marketing in a recessionary environment with slashed marketing budgets. Uh, so in this case, uh, again, coming back to what I have said. Yeah, uh, you are living. Yeah. Have a good one, Vlad. And thanks a lot for join, joining us. It's a pity that you couldn't present everything, but anyhow, take care. So I will, uh, I will take care uh, of the rest of the questions. So Let's look at this one, guys. Uh, B2B marketing in a recessionary environment and with slashed marketing budgets. Uh, in most cases, the budgets are slashed if the leadership doesn't see the marketing me impact on the revenue. You know how it's happening if, if we'll use the fi financial terminology, right? In a bull market, Companies invest like crazy. So they raise money, they give big budgets to marketers saying, hey, so let's hire marketers, let's hire agencies. They set up unrealistic goals. They say, okay, feel free to spend this money as you wish. But when we have, when we are dealing with bear markets where we are right now, right, then every single cent that is invested in marketing is being reviewed. So in this case, I highly recommend you to review all the programs you are running, right? Maybe some of the programs that uh, are supposed to be cut from your marketing plan, uh, just be it, it happens just because these programs are not tied to revenue, right? Maybe start with reviewing all of your processes and campaigns. Make sure that you connect the dots. Make sure that you can uh, prove and demonstrate the marketing source pipeline and marketing source revenue. It makes no sense to cut activities that continually, that uh, basically that continuously generate your revenue, right? What's the point of doing this? So the only point why it happens is because uh, the, let's say the leadership doesn't see that impact. That being said, uh, Maybe you are running some experiments. Maybe you had this opportunity, right, to start TikTok, whatever. Let's pretend. So you had that chance. In this case, you don't see any positive signals and you don't see any traction. And you are under pressure. I would put uh, this, let's say, tactics and would just come back to, again, to uh, maybe four, five, six, seven programs where you are excelling, where you are getting traction and just double down and focusing on them. That would be the point. But again, in this case, you need to have a good, uh, you need to run a good CRM analysis of win and lost opportunities and also the stalled opportunities in your pipeline and look at the programs and channels that generated these opportunities. That would be the go-to way. Um, and uh, 
so the question from Tim about convincing the C C suite, right? Again, it's all about connecting the dots for them. So if they don't see how it's tied to revenue, how this campaign can impact the revenue, they won't have the buy-in. And that's the biggest problem lots of B2B marketers have. They say, hey, let's do demand generation because this is important for our brand. But what exactly you are going to do? Uh, well, probably I will target our target audience on LinkedIn with some content, some ungated content. Okay, so how that can impact our revenue? Uh, well, you don't get marketing. It will just help to create awareness, right? What's the problem here? This campaign is not aligned with the ABM or with, even with the sales playbook. Okay, so what would be the easiest solution? That's why I'm uh, speaking about the, the cohesive models. You are running this ads. Can you see the engagement from accounts and different people? Of course you can, right? Uh, even ungated demand gen campaigns. Can you start connecting with these people, right? I'm not saying pitching, I'm not saying selling, right? But you can connect, you can start connecting with these accounts. You can start learning more, trying to build relationship with the people, with the buying committee of these accounts. And your target metric would be account penetration, right? With how many people from the buying committee of target accounts you were able to connect. And then this means that something happens in these accounts, right? But in this case, if like, if you are not connecting the dots, obviously you have the problem. Um, next one from Claudio, how to apply demand generation full funnel in a super niche, for example, a SaaS plugin for existing CRM that is of a very technical industry. This is basically the, <laughs> the uh, project that we are currently running. So it's like, SaaS plugin for existing well-known CRM, but it's just um, for the enterprise segment. So there are no, let's say, uh, there are no problems with doing it. You can still do it. Maybe the only problem if you are selling to, let's say, to audience that is not active on internet at all, right? Engineers or like accountants, whoever, right? If you are targeting this specific audience, then it would be hard to use any digital solution. So in this case, I would just give you an example. I love to share this. Uh, when uh, we were running a campaign with one of our customers, the only way uh, that, let's say, that the entire buying committee was uh, consisted of the engineers in the biggest European manufacturers. As you guess, these people are not hanging out on TikTok, on LinkedIn, consuming all the content, et cetera, right? So the only one way to target these people was to partner with HVAC Association in Belgium. So the our client was located in Belgium. So they were regularly uh, running the events. And one of the idea was uh, basically sponsoring uh, this association and uh, asking them to create a kind of micro event for us and also bringing one of the third leader uh, and somebody from our client side to run educational events and the association will take care of promotion uh, to engineers. But uh, what we did with the client is that we partnered with this association on the market research and we agreed that we'll publish it's uh, as, let's say, as a comprehensive research on the association's website, uh, but association will help us with booking interviews with these engineers to validate the ideas and lots of opportunities later were generated because of it. That being said, so always think about how to apply the tactics that you have heard about, right, but in your, in your specific um, vertical quite often you guys hear about the communities the power of communities but in some cases associations are the same communities right your target audience might not be hanging out in a slack community right like our trenches slack community but they might belong to a specific association and this is your community this is where you need to be presented so it's not about you know like secret sauce or like something that you have never 
thought about. It's all about applying the best practices that you have seen to your specific business case and to your specific audience. And to understand what uh, basically what will work, I highly recommend you to do the customer research, right? And customer interviews. That's again, coming back to one of the most important points I make all the time. Understand how your customers are buying, what uh, channels do they use, if they belong to any communities or associations, right? Where do they uh, search for professional or collect professional information from? These are your main sources of insights. Uh, so if your pipeline is anemic, how do you change mindset of the sales leaders short-term lead gen way of working? So something that I shared and I would just uh, give you a good um, idea merited here. The first step I would do is the deal analysis. Let's extract all the win and lost opportunities and also stalled opportunities, right? And look where these opportunities are coming from. Uh, if you look at all the lost opportunities, quite often you'll see that I don't want, I don't know what would be your case, but in most cases, the number one channel that generated lost opportunities would be lead gen called outbound. So this channel performs miserable conversion rate. Next, you can talk about the lost opportunities, right? Discuss the reasons. Why did it happen, right? Quite often you'll hear, so our print was, uh, our print is unknown, right? We are lost to this competitor, whatever. You'll hear lots of the reasons, right? Extract all of these reasons and then, have one alignment call with executives and sales. What do we want to achieve, right? What are our goals? They will submit these goals, right? They will tell you, okay, what's the basis? How realistic these goals are, right? How did you plan it? So you can just, I, I wish I can say, hey, so next year I want full funnel to generate 100 million in revenue, but that's not realistic and that's not possible, right? So <laughs> I need to plan uh, by leveraging the basis where we are right now and look at our sales pipeline velocity, right? This is the realistic way. So you can show the sales pipeline velocity. You can also extract these goals and you can ask, okay, so what are the challenges that we are currently facing uh, face as an organization in order to achieve these goals, right? Then everybody, including sales, starts submitting this. And then you pick up all of the insights, right? You can also run interview with sales asking, what's the big, biggest friction point you see in your sales process? Where do you think you have, let, what is the weakest chain in your sales process? How do you think it can be refined? So make sure you collect lots of these insights and based on these interviews, based on these conversations, come up with campaigns. Okay, guys, these were the goals. These were the challenges. This, these are the insights from the, let's say our uh, conversations with sales, right? So this is our sales pipeline velocity, right? These are our revenue metrics, like win rate, like sales cycle lengths, like, um, uh, ACV, etc. I have an idea. I have a list of initiatives that I want to launch, but they are not short term. We won't have the overnight success, right? This is campaign number one. This will help us to fix these specific challenges and to achieve these specific goals, right? And this will help us to improve the existing revenue metrics by whatever. So, for this specific campaign, I need a small lean team. I want to start on a small scope. I don't want to involve everybody. My timeline for this new initiative, six months. These are the leading indicators I will be looking at. No leads, nothing, right? This is the way how we can see that we are getting the traction. So this is the only way to make sure that uh, it will work. So. I will cover KPIs for team. It depends, right? It depends on what campaign you are running. Like if we'll come back to uh, 
sought leadership and let's uh, pretend that you are doing this with sales, right? You can look at these simple metrics, sought leadership followers, uh, where obviously we don't want to make our salespeople and our marketing team as like influencers with 100K followers. In our case, we always insist on building the right audience, not growing the audience in sake of having more followers, but building the right audience, right? So we look at followers only as a consequence if we get more, let's say, if our audience is growing because of the content that we publish. And next one, that's why we look at connected with target accounts, or basically this is what I mean by account penetration, with how many target accounts we were able to connect right? Number of sales conversations, number of discovery calls, number of opportunities and pipeline value that is coming from this activity. But this is how you can uh, measure the thought leadership. You can also add here uh, other, let's say, leading indicators as media coverage or media invites. So invites to be a guest on the podcast, invites to speak at the niche conferences, invites to get a quote from you or somebody from your team and feature you in the industry magazine. So this could be a good uh, metrics, right? But every campaign will have its own set of metrics, hence the KPIs will vary, right? And uh, the last question that I have here, what do you believe the highest ROI marketing skills are in B2B SaaS companies, high ACV? So this is something that we have described here, Danny. And uh, basically, again, uh, we believe in the full funnel model, right? That the modern full funnel B2B marketer need to understand all the stages of the buying journey and understand how to influence these uh, areas. So... I'm stopping the slides and I'm checking uh, I'm checking the uh, questions that you guys have shared in the chat, right? Uh, Krish, could you also share your perspective on how to expand an account LTV? Suppose you have a customer buying one solution right now, how would you cross sell or upsell other solutions to them? Obviously, and uh, by the way, this is the lowest hanging fruit when it comes to launch an account-based marketing programs, right? Traditionally, whenever a company wants to launch ABM, everybody thinks about purchasing ABM software, obviously, because in most cases, they have heard about ABM from ABM vendor, right? And uh, they think only in terms of net new revenue, but the lowest hanging fruit is the expansion campaign. How can you do it? I would give you like a very simple campaign setup. So let's say you have... Um, let's imagine you are selling to a big corporation, right? And this corporation have multiple departments or branches in multiple regions, right? And these regions have their local teams. So the first one you extract, uh, basically extract, you find a champion of power user, right? Of your product, or maybe if you are selling services, then in case uh, the person who collaborates with you close, right? And you can basically combine two initiatives. You can start the podcast and invite this guest. Maybe if the podcast is not an option for you, just have a Zoom call, like we are chatting with you right now, and start going through, like do a kind of debriefing of your collaboration, right? And a short customer research. Why did they select you as a vendor, right? Or why did you? Why did they select your product? Uh, what channels did they use? What are the results they are getting? What is the value they are getting? How do you think your solution is different from the competition, right? Who uh, who are the most active users um, of your product? For what specific reasons they use your product? How often, right? So you can get lots of insights and what are the results they or benefits they are getting from your product? I would create a simple case study and create video snippets and you can go like you can go advanced or you can do a simple setup right so the simple setup is just create a case study and look at other verticals and um branches and start reaching out to people saying hey so I just recently documented case study with like this person from your headquarter for example or from this specific branch so that might be valuable you guys can implement the same right you can do the targeting right and just um, if you have this video snippets you can target 
uh, other branches and other people in the buying committee in different regions. Or you can go more advanced to basically uh, plan a, an event right with this champion and together describe the best practices. So your champion can describe the use case and show maybe some screenshots and examples and the results of the in-house product usage. And you can share some of the best practices and invite these people. And this could be online event, this could be exclusive offline event. So there are plenty of ways how you can do the expansion just giving you the idea how, how to do it. So uh, next one, look, um, Claudia, my pleasure. Ishan, how do you extract reasons for lost opportunities? I mean, the simple way is just sitting down with sales and reviewing every account going one by one. I would look only uh, at tier one accounts, so uh, accounts with the highest revenue potential and just review. Okay, so why did we lose this deal, right? What was the problem? So uh, what was the reason, right? And this is this is the way how you can do it. But ideally your sales team, I mean, if you don't have this in your CRM, that's another kind of, it's not a friction point, but this is a problem. This is the organizational problem that I would raise and tell to everybody, hey, so I went to our CRM and we don't see the lost reasons, right? So in this case, you can do a one-off campaign interviewing sales and like checking one by one each of the accounts and adding this but also insisting on the regular CRM updates. But then I would say if sales don't provide these insights, then uh, this company has a problem with the sales process, definitely. I would, I am not in sales, but I would just tell you, I spent my first five years uh, in sales and I was also at the leadership position. So I would tell you that the sales process is definitely broken. And if you are leading any team, even SDR team, uh, you are in trouble. So that's just the first insight. Okay. Um, so the guys also provided some insights. I don't see the uh, question. Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, sales guys are not always accurate when it comes to understanding for lost reasons. Did the company drop the project altogether? Did they go to your... I mean, that's that's again, if they don't understand the lost reason, how are you going to improve or refine your marketing and sales, right? If you don't understand what is broken, how can you fix it? So that's that's the red flag. I would just put my uh, my attention and try to fix it. That's That's the first thing, right? Uh, so happy to help Krish with the insights. Uh, yeah, uh, it seems that we have uh, covered everything. So it was a brilliant chat, 90 minutes with you guys. Thanks a lot for staying with This is probably our longest episode, but well, it's uh, number 100. So uh, it was a pleasure to spend this time with you. I would highly appreciate if you guys will be able to uh, spend some, like basically five minutes and uh, review our podcast on Spotify. If you don't mind, I would drop a link. That would be very helpful. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, the recording, the slides, everything will be uh, sent to you by email. Uh, I'm dropping the link to our Spotify channel here so again if you can give us five stars leave a short review that would be highly appreciated that's it for today uh next week we won't have the live session and we'll have a few more sessions in december and in 2023 we'll kick off the new season of full final life thank you so much guys have a great rest of the week cheers